Today we're comparing the most popular mid-level diesel RVs. It's perfect for the person looking for affordable luxury, all the amenities of home, and the diesel power. Now there are some overlapping good, bad, and in-between features of all of these coaches. So we're honing in on our top three favorite and least, least favorite, favorite amenities. We're giving it a thumbs up or a thumbs down rating at the end. And remember, it's just our opinions. Yep. So we're here at Mike Thompson's RV in Colton, California. Where they have two of our contenders. <laughs> Starting with our likes, I really like this nice big kitchen and it has a nice pull-out countertop with extra storage drawers. So it's a lot of cooking space. So I really like some of the technology in this coach from the heated floors to the multiplex. Um, the multiplex allows you to control all the slides, all the lights in the coach, and what's really nifty is the percentage of your gray, black, and fresh water. So you can see down to the percent how much water you have left, which is nice for boondocking. And what's not to love about a giant closet with lots of room for clothes and shoes and all the things I need while I'm traveling. So on to my dislikes. I'm not a huge fan of these windows. They're kind of bulky and they're actually custom so if you have to replace one because it's damaged it might cost you a pretty penny. There's also seems to be a hole in several of the windows down here that it looks big enough to fit a fly or a mosquito and also you know exposes you to the elements a little bit more. So another one of my downsides here is the way the AC is set up. On the driver's side you have all return vents and on the passenger side you have all of the fresh air actually coming out. So what does that mean? That means here in the bathroom which is on the driver's side you have no fresh air conditioning, no cold air coming into the bathroom. So when you're showering on hot days it's going to get steamy and pretty darn hot in here. With the slides in, it is definitely a nice snug fit through here. So accessing your refrigerator can get a little tricky. Your bathroom is still accessible, but your bedroom, well, let's hope you don't need to get in there. <laughs> to wrap things up, our favorites were the nice kitchen, the big closet, and the multiplex technology. And our least favorites are the ventilation, the AC in the bathroom, the bulky custom windows, and the narrow, narrow hallway for getting to the back with the slides in. So overall, we give this coach... Two, three, three, one, two, two and a half. Two and a half? Two and a half stars. Two and a half thumbs. Yep, Jeez, thumbs. Louise with the stars, thumbs. <laughs> Starting with our likes is the outside freezer, which is definitely a cool aspect for hot summer days. Store lots of stuff in there. However, I wish it was in a different bay, and if this were my coach, I think I would move it to a different bay. Because it's under this slide. So the entry door on this motorhome is really nice. It's thick, it's solid, it closes quiet, and the door is actually a little bit wider than most RVs, which is pretty nice coming in. I really like how spacious the dining table is and how much room you have to wiggle around over here. It's a little tight. But <sighs> it's also cool because the table moves and slides. So depending on where you're sitting or how much room you need to breathe, you're planning on eating a lot, you can have extra room. So for our dislikes, let's start here in the cockpit. Uh, everything's white, so I have a feeling it's going to be really bright and shiny when you're driving into the sun or the sun is coming into the side, so it could be a little bit blinding. Also, white attracts dust and dirt, so it could become a little grimy unless you're like a super clean person. So at first I really liked the giant pull-out tray and the slide, but then I realized it's carpeted, so it's going to get really dusty. It could get moldy and gross. Um, another thing is, you can't put anything really tall, not much taller than this, otherwise it won't slide back in. Uh, so that's kind of a negative. So you have this huge width, but not a lot of height, and you have to compete with your extra chairs and your ladder and a few other things that need a place to live too. I don't really like this kitchen. I'm big into cooking and it just feels very awkward and disjointed because you've got your sink here, but yet your counter space is here. 
and your stove and your refrigerator on this side. Granted, they give you a pot fill, but how much pasta does anyone really need to eat? Overall, our favorites were the solid entry door, the sliding dining table, and the outside freezer. And for the downsides, we have the sliding tray in the bay, we have the white driver's area, and the disconnected disjointed kitchen. Yep. So overall, we give this coach one, two, two thumbs, up. thumbs up. Two thumbs up. <laughs> Two solid thumbs. So we popped over to Giant RV in Montclair for this next coach. Starting with our likes, I like all of the windows in this coach. There are windows almost the entire length of the coach, so it is well lit in pretty much every room. So at first I didn't love this TV, but then I found out it has this really cool feature. And it's articulated, so no matter where you are, it's the perfect viewing angle. If you like luxury, then these high gloss cabinets definitely provide the look. It's a nice upgraded feature in a mid-level coach. So the driver's area looks nice, but it's not a smart wheel, so there's no controls on here for the radio or anything, which I kind of like. The chairs are a little big and they feel uh, less supportive than other chairs at this price point. So there's no nav built into the radio, and there's only one screen versus most RVs in this class have two screens. So the next dislike is kind of a big one because it's the unseen details that definitely make a difference. Like the slide, this is actually plastic, and at this price point and in other coaches in this price point, that's not something I've seen before. So that made me nervous, and the engine compartment is just an unfinished piece of plywood as to where others are usually either tiled or carpeted or something, but not usually unfinished like that. So the little details that you don't necessarily see. So for the coaches in this SmackDown, the Tuscany has a smaller engine with less horsepower, less torque, and it's built on a rail chassis instead of a bridge chassis. So the ride's not gonna be quite as smooth, and the bay doors, the storage area, is not gonna be quite as tall. Our three big likes were the lots and lots of windows, the articulating TV and the high gloss cabinetry. And the dislikes, the technology around the driver's area, the little hidden things you don't necessarily see, and the rail chassis and smaller engine. Yep. So overall we give this coach one and a half thumbs. One and a half thumbs. <laughs> so we had to drive way over here to Fountain Valley, California to see Mike Thompson's. Yep, for our last coach. Last coach. Starting with our likes is the driver's area. The dash looks really nice and car-like. The nav built into the stereo. Uh, smart wheel, of course. Day-night shades everywhere. And really comfortable, heated seats. I really like the layout of this living area. It has a really nice communal feel, and it feels like a home. Plus, you get a giant 48-inch LED TV. So I really like these storage bays. First of all, they're lined with Citadel, which is easy to clean, much easier to keep clean than carpet. I like the way that the trays aren't crazy wide. They're a little bit more manageable, and because of the chassis, you can put bins that are a lot taller in this coach than you can in some of the others we've looked at. Moving on to our dislikes, mine is the kitchen. Because we have such a big communal living area, we have a smaller kitchen, which means less countertop space and less cabinet space than we've seen in some of the other coaches. And again, because we have such a large living area, we kind of sacrifice a bit in the bathroom. Uh, compared to some of the other RVs we've looked at, this bathroom is a little more cramped and the shower, the sink, and the toilet are all in the same room. Because we have this nice big king size bed, we don't have a lot of space in between the bed and the closet. Plus, there's this crazy step up. So getting to your clothes on this side is gonna be a little bit of a challenge. Starting with our likes with the car-like driver's area, the Citadel-lined storage bays and the, the normal size trays inside, and the nice, comfortable, home-like living area. Yep. And our dislikes were the smaller kitchen and cabinet space, the tight space in between the bed and the closet, and the small bathroom. So overall, we give this coach how I'm many going thumbs? Two. I'm gonna go one. Three thumbs up for this coach. 
So we've driven all over California and spent hours in each of these coaches. Yep, and as you can tell, it was a close call. But our top contenders were the Discovery and the Phaeton. But that's just our opinion, so what do you think? Which would you choose? Which works for you? <laughs> yeah, leave us your comments in the box below, and we hope to see you on the road. See you on the road.